Rowing, a race through time. The first Olympic Games were held in 776 BC. In the first Olympics, instead of wearing clothes, athletes coated their bodies with oil. They thought the oil would protect them from the sun and lubricate their muscles. After competing, to remove the oil, athletes scraped themselves with a stridule. When they were rowing in ancient times, so in ancient Egypt and in ancient Greece, um, in the, the warships, they would be naked a lot of the time. Um, or they would have very small amount of clothing on because you know they were stuck in a dark hull of a boat. It was hot. Um, and they were you know forced to, to row for long periods of time at great speed. So it was you know much more comfortable um, just to, to strip off. Rowing was meant to feature in the first modern Olympics in 1896, but got cancelled due to bad weather. Four years later, rowing was included in the next games. Unlike the ancient Olympics, the rowers competed in clothes made of wool and silk. London hosted the Olympics in 1908, 1948 and 2012. During the 1948 Olympics, the rowers competed in big wooden boats with spoon oars. Surprisingly, women were not allowed to participate athletically in the Olympic Games until 1976 in Montreal. Around this time, they introduced sliding outriggers to rowing boats. This is where the riggers slide instead of the seat. This technology was quickly banned from competition because it gave too much advantage to the crews that could afford to use it. We are a sport that it's about who's in the boat, not about the, the, the resources and, and funding that you can spend on research. We don't want the sport to become like Formula One. It's the countries with the, the most money that win the races. It's about of, of, of testing the athletes. So there's been very little change within, within rowing over the years. In 1984, Sir Steve Redgrave won his first Olympic gold. He and his team wore cotton jerseys and used wooden oars. In 2000, the Sydney Olympics, the GB women won their first medal. At this time, all rowers wore flattering like jerseys. We always used to have a saying, especially in the Olympic year, we had to say, how Olympic do you feel this morning? <laughs> and if we said that every morning, we'd be, do, do you feel Olympic this morning? <laughs> and um, yeah, and that's what we tried to do every morning of the Olympic. We wanted to make sure we went out there and did every single training session as best as we could. And at the Sydney Olympics in 2000, Sir Steve Redgrave and his team won gold using carbon fibre boats and hatchet oars. In 2008, rowing was introduced to the Paralympics in Beijing. Naomi Richie's competed, winning bronze in the mixed coxed four. They overhaul the British in the final quarter to take the... 2008 was a really great year because it was the first time that rowing had been at the Paralympics. So it was a debut for that sport there. So that was really, really interesting and exciting to be part of. In 2012, our GB rowing team absolutely smashed it in sexy spandex, winning nine medals, including four golds and a Paralympic gold too. Having my first games as a home games was quite a treat really, like and having all family and all friends able to come, um, lots of support. Um, I think it would be hard to match that in Rio just because it is the other side of the world. It's so much more difficult to get to. From the ancient Olympics, so much has changed compared to the 2016 Rio Olympics. Who knows what the future will hold?